Welcome back, guys. If you have not already done the Anchor Phenomenon assignment, I need you to stop this video and go back and do that. Um, that's how we're going to be starting our main units is with an Anchor Phenomenon, which just means it's a real life occurrence that we'll be able to connect what we learn back to. So the one for this unit is the coronavirus. Um, so make sure you go back, watch that video, and write the CER like is in the other assignment. So if you've done that, let's get started. Our unit that we're going to be on for unit one is going to be how we get from atoms to an organism. So what we're learning about first is a little bit of chemistry review. You've probably heard of most of this in middle school, hopefully. This should be a review. If not, buckle in, take some notes. You're going to be tested on this material. Okay, so all living things are based on atoms and their interactions. We're all just a big nervous bunch of chemistry. And you've probably never really thought of that that way before. Um, but you think about it, you know, sugars, proteins, all of that, they're just molecules. And we know we need those things to survive. So let's talk about a little of the chemistry behind that. Okay. So an atom is the smallest basic unit of matter. So we should know that by now. So an element is one type of atom. So hydrogen is all one type of atom. They're all atoms that have one proton. Ox oh, sorry. Oxygen is all atoms that have eight protons. Anyway, so atoms have a nucleus and electrons. So the nucleus has protons. Ignore the numbers right here. That was left over from last semester. There were guided notes that we did when we were in person. So if you're wondering what those are, don't panic. They were just to help them find the blanks where things go. Okay, so the nucleus has the protons and the neutrons in it, and then electrons are in the energy levels outside the nucleus. So it's kind of like this is the sun and all the little electrons are like the planets orbiting it. So the protons, you see this plus sign, that means they're positive. Let's see if I can. So neutrons, it looks like the word neutral. They don't have a charge and electrons are negative or um, they have a negative charge to them. So energy levels are just layers of electrons around the nucleus. The ones on the outside are going to be the most important because those are valence electrons. Sorry, I think I repeated myself. Um, but valence electrons determine how an element reacts. So if you wanna know if a chemical reaction will occur, you have to look at the valence electrons. Whenever I try to bind two things together, that happens with the valence electrons. So, so right here, so right here we have, um, a particular molecule and we can see that carbon usually has these four blue electrons in its outer shell. So it wants to fill the outer energy level so it needs to borrow an extra four from various hydrogen atoms. So that's how it kind of molecules. So a compound is anything that's made, it's atoms of different elements bonded together. So water is a compound, sugar is a compound. Table salt is a compound. So this one is carbon dioxide. So we know what carbon is. Di means two and oxide means oxygen. So you're not going to have to know a whole bunch of chemical formulas in order to do well in this class. But things like water and carbon dioxide, you'll need to be able to recognize those. So for those of you taking notes, which all of you ought to be taking notes, make sure that you are writing that out. Write down the, you know, H2O equals water and CO2 equals carbon dioxide. It's not so much that I'm going to test you on that. It's that later on when we get into energy and things, you're going to hear that shorthand a lot and you'll need to understand that to get the other stuff. So there's a lot of car sorry, there's a lot of carbon-based compounds of living things in your in a 
when we get to macromolecules, it's like in a lesson or two. Yeah, we have water and then we have macromolecules. Um, you've heard that we are carbon-based life forms, and that's because almost everything that's important in your body has carbon in it some kind of way. Sugar, carbon. Fat, carbon. Proteins, they've got carbon in there too. Okay, so ionic bonding. Ions form when you gain or lose an electron, so they're not balanced. This is what happens if I don't have the same number of protons as electrons. So my positives and my negatives are equal, so that makes an ion. So something called ionic bonds form when I have one that has lost some electrons and it's kind of positive, and then I have one that has gained electrons and it's a little negative, so since they have opposite charges, it's like a magnet, they stick together. So this picture is showing us how table salt is made. So sodium um, only has one electron in its outer shell, just that one lonely electron. And chlorine has almost a full shell, but it's just missing one. So what happens is chlorine will snatch one from sodium It'll make itself negative and sodium positive, and then they stick together with this almost magnetic charge. So that's an ionic bond. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this up here. I kind of just explain this to you. If you're taking notes, you might wanna pause it and get that written down. Remember, positive ions lost electron, negative ones gained an electron. Okay. So covalent bonds form when atoms share electrons. So I kind of think of the whole electron situation a little bit like um, a custody dispute, right? So sometimes you go, you know, a, a kid will spend the same amount of time with mom and dad. So that's a covalent bond. They're sharing custody of those electrons. If we go back to ionic bonds, there's not a lot of shared custody. One took them and it's there all the time. So here's the thing to think about. Do we think that covalent bonds are always equal? So oxygen is pretty big, right? Do you think that something that big would share equally with something little like hydrogen? That's a thing to think about. Okay, so a molecule is formed by two or more atoms held together by covalent bonding. So we can see that it's sharing their orbitals overlap, and this is how we make carbon dioxide. Okay, so I really want you guys to think about the unequal bonding thing. We're going to address that in the next lesson. I'm trying to keep this kind of short because I know we had an anchor phenomenon video and you already had to do a CER over that. Um, make sure that you are answering the questions that go with 2.1. They'll be in a Google Doc attached to this assignment. So make sure that you answer those and turn them in. Um, take care, be safe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.